Okay. So we're going to continue now and talk about delayed suprachoroidal hemorrhage uh, occurring in the post-operative period at any time after surgery. Um, I've seen or been asked to see patients with delayed suprachoroidal hemorrhage as soon as six hours from the end of surgery. And I've certainly seen one patient develop a delayed suprachoroidal hemorrhage four weeks after surgery, after trabeculectomy. Characteristically, the patients present with sudden onset, severe pain and loss of vision, often associated with nausea, vomiting and feeling profoundly unwell. When you look at the patient, uh, they'll often have anterior chamber shallowing, depending on the phacic status of the eye. They may have vitreous prolapse into the anterior chamber and loss of the red reflex. It's important to try and get an early view of the fundus to delineate what you're dealing with. And the intraocular pressure may be high, normal or low in the early stages following a delayed suprachoroidal hemorrhage. Characteristically, over the first 24 hours, the eye is going to get very inflamed indeed. If we actually think about trying to prevent delayed suprachoroidal hemorrhage in the post-operative period, I think one of the key things is to work hard to make sure your patient understands their role in the post-operative course. And so it is critical to avoid eye rubbing. If patients are atopic or habitual eye rubbers, I will actually try and get them out of this habit by appropriate measures before I operate because it's too late post-operatively. I advise people about heavy lifting, straining and particularly straining at stool and a colleague of mine recently had a patient develop a suprachoroidal hemorrhage two weeks after trabeculectomy when they were straining at stool because they were constipated. If patients have severe involuntary blepharospasm, I will think strongly about taking measures to reduce this, even involving uh, periorbital Botox before I operate. It's amazing how often people won't wear their shield at night unless you really reinforce the importance of it. And again, in an eye that is uh, in a young person, a large eye, a vitrectomized eye, it is very important indeed that they're not sleeping face down and squashing the eye all night. If you enjoyed this lecture so far, please subscribe to http colon forward slash forward slash iop dot vision. I hope you enjoy this series as much as we have putting it together. Thank you.